Hey guys, welcome to the next episode in the England Let's Play on FM13. And yes, we are continuing. We are potentially going now to Euro 2056. <laughs> oh, the years are just confusing me now. Anyway, uh, we're just going to have a sort of end of year review of the latter half of the year, 2054, whilst we get ready for uh, the next year, obviously, of qualifiers. Uh, and we've started them. Uh, but the reason I, I was originally going to tag this on to the end of the um, to the Argentina video or whatever it was, but oh sorry the review video I should say uh, of the of the World Cup, but I don't know I I decided against it and just thought I'd do this because there are a few different players and I don't want to just like all of a sudden just throw these new players in your face and just go whoa what's going on, so what I'd rather do is just you know take it a bit easier and just say okay here's a bunch of new players you know I've decided to get rid of get rid of a few older ones keep maybe one or two in but you know do what I do with the club teams and that's you know try and bring in youth uh, you can't really do that as such at international level I mean you can but it really is a bit of a piss take <laughs> you know it's not very realistic um, as well you know international managers don't stick around usually for that long to see you know at, like for example you could bring an 18 year old into the international team you're only going to be around until he's like 22, 23. I mean, what's the point of that? You know, just thinking from a selfish point of view for a second, there's no real, you know, gains to that. I mean, apart from, the, I mean, if you, I mean, I've better mind as a football manager, it, it doesn't matter in real life. I realise you can be a little bit different in real life. But, you know, I'm sure if, if you're looking through the names here, you're looking at one or two names, I'll go over some of them in a minute. In fact, no, I'll do it and do it now. We'll do it now. Um, so in fact, I'll go through the whole team to be honest, just in case, so to re-familiar uh, your eyes yourself. So first one, we have a uh, goalkeeper, Mick Adamson. Uh, this is obviously going to be changing all the time. You know, injuries are coming out and in, so there are going to be missing players here. There are going to be players to come in later on who you haven't seen yet and so on. So just bear that in mind. This is not the finished squad yet, but just here's a few players. If you are playing along at home as well, um, the link is in the description if you want to download the save. It is before the way it is, the download is one before the World Cup I must point out so if you want to try the World Cup yourself please go ahead but unfortunately I don't actually have a save now um, unless actually no I'd rather actually I'd, I'd, yeah I don't actually have a save at the moment uh, checkpointed for um, after the World Cup because I will have overwritten this uh, save by the time uh, it comes out on video on uploaded to YouTube so just to point that out uh, Gavin Spencer you know about this guy the Manchester City goalkeeper with strangely blonde hair I reckon the uh, Aston to appear in a head and shoulders advert as well. <laughs> um, we've got Derek Lomas here, a player who's been on the fringes of the goalkeeping sort of area for the last few years. He was nearly thrown into the World Cup. I'm not uh, to the World Cup squad. I'm not sure if he actually was. He might have been. Um, next one, we've got a guy, 23 years old, plays for Millwall, called Steve Ahmed. Good player. Looks all right. Can play at right and centre back. Elliot Hughes. Now, this is what I'm talking about when you say piss take you know I've got a 17 year old here now he's not great at the moment but you know I gave him two appearances as you can see and you know you have to ask the question is he good enough or will he be good enough in say a year and a half's time when we go to Russia which is where the next Euros are going to be held it's always worth giving him good experience as well in the international team because you know that's only going to benefit possibly yourself in the long term and as I say not just because it's not normal to see international managers stay for a long time doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay or you won't stay there for a long time There's, I'm sure if you go in if I in fact if I just do this I'm trying not to where the hell is that? oh I can't find it never mind <laughs> I'm sure that there's a managers list um, when you look at long serving managers I don't know where it is I would see it somewhere isn't it see so if you look at long serving managers which it won't show me uh, never mind you can see some names there as well see if any jump out at you uh, you know you does does one of the longest serving managers is actually an international manager? So yeah, um, so you seventeen one for the future. Four and a half star potential looks pretty good. Next one is um, this guy <laughs> plays for Man United. I can't believe that is that is not a real name. I don't know what happened in the future. I don't know whether girls' names have become boys or something, but and vice versa. But yeah, <laughs> Stacey Stevens of Manchester United. I can't believe that's a name. Sorry, that's embarrassing. I'd be round the, I'd be in the court next day if that was my name. As soon as I turned eighteen, I'd change that right away. Goodness me, but he's picked up his first clap. He was desperately unlucky not to make it for, uh, earlier. He was, he was, he got injured. I called him up to the squad, 
last year sometime or earlier in the year and he got injured on international duty and he was out so he was unfortunate and obviously therefore missed out on the squad as well as so didn't want to have an uncapped player in there Warwick Riley I think you know left back uh, it's a bit hit and miss good player usually though there's no um, uh, yeah there are quite a few big players missing mainly because we just had a friendly so I'm not too bothered by that next one we've got uh, Callum Haylock a 19 year old uh, looks to be very versatile can play in centre midfield centre back and left back and he's on two star which is pretty good plays for Wigan yeah looks like a good prospect again Malcolm Gibbons, you know, and I think Roscoe Hannigan, you know, Fraser Hughes, uh, sort of been on the fringes again. So I've brought him in and out. He's a good player without being amazing. You know, he just sort of does his job type of thing. And naturally, you know, football manager, people don't look for players like that. They want impact players, you know, ones who can really, you know, grab, grab the game by the scruff of the neck. Fraser Hughes doesn't do that. <laughs> now, a player that used to do that doesn't do it anymore, of course, is Craig Cooley, who is still the captain. He's at FC Laureate now. I think he was last time. And as you can see, he's just going down and down and down he is 36 years old don't know whether he's going to be in the squad or not but I'm keeping him around for now just for you know experience Steve Lang former um, vice captain stripped him of the vice captaincy of Italy on Fowler uh, Baron Searle another player who's quite unlucky not to have been included a bit earlier if it weren't for Craig Cooley sticking around he probably would be in so too would Liam Frost good player plays for Newcastle I think yep good player he's only 25 he looks pretty good uh, Carl Henderson, remember this guy from Tottenham? Yeah, good player, left winger. He's been in and out of the team as well. I think I dropped him out when I uh, first came in, but he keeps, you know, doing quite well. Tom Basto, very useful uh, left side to play. Plays for Chelsea. He is transfer listed though. I think he may. I think he's going to go to Manchester City. I think, or he will. Guy Sheridan, you know, uh, Sedat Demir. Turkish, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, he looks all right. He's four appearances, one goal. It's not that great, but he is only young. Um, and I think you know these three. You know Gareth Sweeney, of course, the um, very very good player now. For I think he he swapped as well, or he will swap. Sorry, he was at Man United. I think he's going to go to Chelsea. So that's the squad. Let's uh, have a look and see how we got on. Um, and obviously, you can see we're first. So I mean, to be fair, it's that much of a surprise, really. <laughs> so. We came back a few months later, played Poland, 1-2-0. Uh, Les Murray scored. Uh, that was on his debut. I have never known a player to have such irritating shooting. Now, we all have players, you know, on this game. You can set their long shots to rarely. And sometimes, you know, it'll work. And sometimes it won't make a blind bit of difference. This guy is on a, is a case in point. It doesn't make a blind bit of difference. What you tell him, his shooting will be off. And I mean, honestly, he, I think he's hit the corner flag more than he's hit the back of the net for England. He is appalling. And if we look at his stats, he actually isn't all that great. He is a he is a proper winger. Look, he's all pace. <laughs> he is he is Theo Walcott incarnate. Look. Oh my god, that is absolutely Theo Walcott. They are appalling stats, aren't they? Well, they're not appalling. He's got a, got a decent amount of off the ball, I suppose. Where's his shooting? Where is it? First, yes, he's finishing, finishing nine. That's, he is he's a potential striker. You know, he's someone who may might play bright for Brighton up front, and his finishing is nine. So yeah, he's not actually that great a player, but he does a job, sort of. But he did score here against Poland, and uh, Johnny Corrigan also off the bench. You know, there are a few players, as I say, missing now, missing from the team, etc. Um, and the sun is coming through the window, and it's blinding me. I'll just uh, pause it, and I'll be back in a sec. So if the uh, clock in the <laughs> up here does change time, then I'm sorry, but uh, I need to uh, shut the window, as uh, I'm going to be blinded by the sun in one moment. Right, sorry about that. So uh, let's show you the highlights. Then I'll show you the goals rather. Um, well, yeah, it took us a while to actually break them down, but you know we, we were having you know we dominated the game pretty much. It was only a matter of time. Well, it really says something as well when the centre back Gibbons there is uh, excuse me, is man of the match. Incidentally, there's uh, Blazikovsky there. Thank God we've seen him in real life because otherwise uh, I wouldn't have no clue how to pronounce his name. And there's, uh, there's Basto, quite, you know, that, I mean, their goalkeeper was ridiculous as well. I remember it took them ages to score, but because um, their goalkeeper was doing really well, I'm trying to, we'll, we'll see there. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> does this thing where it hangs, doesn't it? 
It always hangs when you least expect it. There's Corrigan, they've killed it off here. Don't know what he was doing in the end. I mean, it worked, but risky strategy. Yeah, they got they got give us six point five. Give me a break. He was amazing. The so no, the rating system on this game is bollocks, absolute bollocks. Uh, then Sedan Demir scored his first and only goal. Brought a few more players back in Amir. Remember Harrison McDonald? Remember him? Now our Man United, I think, he was at Villa at one point. Um, brought him back to see how he do. Didn't do that well, to be honest. Gave him another chance to make a Robert today. It's very hot and cold. Uh, but we'll show you Demir's goal. Provided it doesn't uh, freak out when I ask it to, which it probably will. But you know, the, the friendlies are all about experimentation. Actually, we we kind of got lucky with this um, with this win because Croatia were in fact the better team. I mean, this was a slightly experimental team, but not that it mattered. And there really were no highlights. I mean, look at that. Look, look at our highlights. Look at the dog out the way. You know, let's look, look at the blue bar. Look, you can see that the sort of transparent lines there. You know, they're all the highlights, and there really weren't that many. I mean, after the goal, there was one more, and that really is about it. But these are the qualifiers, uh, championship, sorry, Euro qualifiers then. So 3-0 against Slovenia. Uh, Fowler scored two and Haylock scored there. So he got his uh, first goal. Uh, Lithuania 2-0. Two, two goals for Nigel French. And 2-0 uh, against Estonia away. There's a two away there. Goals for Hadfield and Sweeney. Uh, unfortunately, we lost the friendly, but we'll get back to that in a minute. We'll just show you the goals. Firstly, Slovenia. Um, this is really, again, I, I don't know whether to even show you these because quite frankly just not, not the goals I mean the actual like the results and stuff because th these are poor excuses for for uh, qualifiers I mean you, you think they're bad now in real life you know there's always you're always going to end up playing you know a good team in your group chances are you know or at least you know a half decent team but now on this this is just pointless the hardest team in this group I think is Switzerland Switzerland for God's sake I mean, they're, they're okay, actually. But still, we really should have no problem beating them. And as you can see, I mean, there's Halo. That lovely had a 20 minutes. It's 3 0. It's just, too, it's just it's silly. Uh, Lithuania, 2 0 here. So it was two goals for French. He sort of popped back in and out of the team. He's been a little bit. I don't know. I think he's been injured, I think. And he's also been. Um, uh, what is it? He's been out of form and injured, so that's why he's sort of goes away. Here's Murray for the one. I think does he shoot? No, he actually passed it to French, which is rare because he always shoots at this guy. He always, always shoots as I say. And uh, his will and he will, and I mean, hit the corner flag every time. <laughs> he's so bad for it. I love some of the names of the Lithuanian players like here, like Bogdan Vicius. <laughs> and I think there's a, they all end in Vicius in the same way Croatians all end in a ch sound <laughs> or itch or something there's a let's see what's this one yeah Victor Avicius <laughs> so the new uh, it's the new Croatians right here's Peter Main there's another one from um, if switch he's a good player very handy player so they're number 8 I think he is is that yeah Peter Main good player him and that's uh, two goals for French and lastly here Estonia 2-0 um, who are the goals here we had Hadfield and Sweeney so as you can see, I'm playing again, like of Haylock, Ahmed, Clark and goal. Gives me a chance, you know, to, to just experiment, I suppose. Be glad they did not have a single shot on target. This is how embarrassingly stupid these qualifiers are. And it's also just a point, I have no say in this. This is just a draw. I can't help this, if you are wondering. And I can't believe I've got to address this, but yeah, I have to. I can't help that the fucking game gives me these draws. Okay. <laughs> um, Hadfield arriving there brilliantly the left back making a run just as I want them to with the wing backs and that's a super finish for his first goal and uh, he's involved again there I suppose setting the, uh, the play up originally uh, for the second goal here's Sweeney plays it to uh, Murray who again surprisingly didn't shoot because he honestly I, I just can't stress how infuriating he is I think I've dropped him so many times purely because of it and also that all the players have dropped after giving them a chance and they just spoil it but a great shot there from Murray a uh, decent effort from McDonald and uh, again it's you're looking at that thinking he doesn't look too bad what are you complaining about trust me you need to see him in a full 90 minutes it's why highlight reels are a load of rubbish um, <laughs> then we lost uh, I think that may have been the first loss in a friendly like our first loss even in 90 minutes let's see yeah yeah, first loss in 90 minutes was to Italy. 
Uh, good game. Stacey Stevens, though, did not help himself at all. I give him a chance, and that's what happens. Mateo Mosqueta also got sent off. Remember this guy? 31 years old now he is, I think. Where's the... Yeah, it's a Dortmund. I brought him in from Juve at Dortmund, and he sold them on naturally. Uh, he well, just left. Yeah, he left the season I came in. Uh, or the summer before I came in. But this was a real kick to the fucking balls, because... Um, he scored Mosqueta, got sent off a few minutes later. French equaliser, as you can see there, es Espisotti, or whatever the fuck his name was, um, equal uh, scored the winner in the 92nd minute. But a nice uh, finish there in France, but you always got to be disappointed as a goalkeeper when you get beat at your near post. It's where you never ever want to be beaten as a goalkeeper. Well, you don't want to be lobbed, but <laughs> you know, it's pretty, you know you, uh, that's in fairness, that requires actual skill on the half of the striker. A strange header there from uh, the Italian player. Gave it to, um, I think it was Frost or someone. But Stevens putting that cross and French with a nice finish there. So Frost set him up with that little header. And then this was, say, was pretty much the last kick of the game. The corner. Look at that. How many bodies did it go through? <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Well, that was a bit of a shitty way to end the year. You know, it's been a, an odd year. <laughs> <laughs> certainly uh, these are our fixtures then for 2055 basically all qualifiers obviously the friendlies will be added at a later date but we've got to play Albania and Switzerland and I think we'll have played everyone so probably the Swiss games are probably the hardest I wonder if we can go through a whole group because bear in mind we haven't conceded yet uh, <laughs> but I mean I just I can't explain how crap that is I mean imagine being drawn in that group now in real life I think even England had managed to cock that up. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, what can you do? That's what the game's given me. I'm just going to play it. I can't help anything else. Uh, we'll have a look at the other groups as well if you are interested. I'll just look for your country. Uh, Italy and Ukraine, they're far ahead of Northern Ireland, Belarus and Moldova. Uh, Serbia have risen from the ashes. They were a bad, bad state a few years ago uh, I nearly took them over and thought maybe I can rebuild them but I, 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 it's so hard to do internationally it is really really hard that's why the San Marino challenge requires you to take over the San, Mar San Marino's club as well because you've got no chance literally no chance of just doing it with the international team uh, Germany and Austria obviously being linked together there in Group D um, they look I mean also just to point out the f top two qualify so really if honestly, if I don't qualify from this group, you've got to say that is the worst, yeah, the, easily the worst performance. Then, if I don't qualify in anything, but you know, we're already set virtually. I mean, we, it'd have to be a monumental cock up to to lose this. Um, Ireland and Wales, so go and go on Britain there. <laughs> um, of course, Ireland were the runs up in the last European uh, Championship, believe it or not, when they, they lost to Spain in the final. Uh, Belgium and Georgia Georgia God. Uh, Group F Czech Republic and Iceland ahead of Turkey who are actually although Turkey do have games in hand um, Scotland and France yeah, I mean look at the teams man it's just it's stupid Holland and Portugal being drawn alongside each other there and Poland who aren't actually too bad so yeah very interesting uh, line up there right so I think that will do it for me then so I'm going to be back at the end of 2055 and uh We'll see if we're qualified, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.